Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem partition to k equals subset sum. So this is definitely a challenging problem, especially for a medium, but it is a very good problem to understand. You can definitely learn a lot. We're given an integer array of nums and we're given a single integer k. We want to return true if it's possible to divide this array of nums into k non-empty subsets such that the sum of all of the subsets are equal. In other words, uh, what is the sum of those subsets going to be? It's going to be nums, uh, or rather the sum of all of the numbers in the array divided by k, right? So of course it has to be divisible by k, right? So suppose our sum of integers is 10 and k happens to be 2, then we have uh, 10 divided by 2. That means each subset is going to have a sum of Five. But if we had a total of 11 and we had two uh, subsets, this does not divide. So it's it's clearly impossible, right? So that's that's one check that we can do. But in the generic case, uh, it's going to be pretty difficult to solve this problem. It's not going to be a super efficient solution. But let's just try to understand how we can even get a working solution at all. And the easiest way to start is to try to understand one of the examples. So here you can see that this is the input that we're given. It has about seven integers in it. It doesn't really matter how many integers we have because we are guaranteed that we're going to have at least k integers, which makes sense if we're going to divide this into k different groups. The sum of all of these integers happens to be, I think it's about 20. We need to divide 20 into four equal groups of a, a total sum of five each. And is it possible to do that? There's one way that they explain to us here. If we just take five and put it in its own group, if we take four and one, put them in their own group, if we take a, a three and two from here, and you can see we have another three and two over here. So it's possible these are gonna be the four groups. So in that case, we can return true. But how exactly can we come up with what the solution is? It's not easy. In the worst case, we're going to kind of have to check every single possible combination. And even doing that itself, uh, you know, checking every possible combination is called backtracking. That's the technique that we're going to be using. And even doing it this way, there's multiple backtracking solutions you can do. So the important thing here is to really understand the time complexity of each of them so we can figure out which one is the most efficient. Even though, in my opinion, if you can come up with any of them at all, you should pass your interview, but you never know. So let's try to understand the most efficient way to do this. So like I mentioned, there's multiple ways to solve this problem with backtracking. First, let me explain to you one of the slightly less efficient ways, and the time complexity of this solution is actually going to be uh, k, the input k, to the power of n, where n is actually going to be the size of this nums array. So one way to think about this is we have we want k uh, equal size groups, right? So it's almost like we want k buckets, right? K is four, so we have like uh, four buckets, right? Each of them is going to be initially zero. We want to fill each of these buckets with the integer, uh, the sum of nums divided by k, right? This is our target that we're looking for for each of these buckets. Right, and the general idea here is we're gonna iterate through this list of nums, and each time we get to one of these integers, we have a decision. What is our decision? Well, we can put this four value in the first bucket, or the second bucket, or the third bucket, or the fourth bucket, and we're gonna have that choice for every single value in this input array. So you can see that if we drew the decision tree, it would look something like this. We'd have four decisions, in other words, k decisions each time. And, you know, then we would continue to do that. And we do that for every single integer. You can already tell how huge this tree is going to be. The height of the tree is going to be n because we have n integers in the input array. So that's where I'm getting this time complexity k to the power of n from. 
And this isn't really a bad solution in my opinion, but it's hard to get this to actually pass on leak code because there is a slightly more efficient solution that I'm gonna show you. And uh, just to kind of skip ahead, let me actually tell you what the time complexity of that solution is before we even implement the solution so, I, so that you can kind of understand why it's better. It's actually gonna be two to the power of n. And you can see that two to the power of n is usually gonna be smaller than k, k could be a really big integer. Even if k was three, three to the power of n, two to the power of n is actually a lot smaller than this value. It might not seem like it, but it's a lot smaller. So this is a very uh, much more efficient solution. There's actually gonna be one more constant in it, k times two to the power of n. Let me actually explain to you this solution uh, and how we can code it up as well. So the idea is pretty similar because we are gonna have a, the target value, which is gonna be the exact same, the sum of the nums divided by k. But in this case, uh, for each value we have, we're gonna only have two decisions. We're gonna say either we include this number in our sum or we don't include this number in our sum. And rather than trying to create all k of the buckets at once, we're gonna start just creating a single bucket. We know that the, the sum, the target value of a bucket is in this case five, right? So we're gonna try to get this target value of five from any of the values in this input array. So doing it like this, you can see we have two decisions rather than K. So for each value, suppose four, either we include four or we don't include four, which would give us a zero. We go to the next value now, three. Either we include the three, which will put us at seven, or we don't include the three, which will leave us at four. Uh, similarly on the right side of the tree, we uh, include the three or we don't include the three, which will leave us at zero. Now, one thing you can already tell, in one of the cases, we went over our target value. So of course, this is not one of the ways we can sum up to this target. So we're not gonna continue down this path. There's no need. We're gonna continue doing this for every single value in the array. It's gonna be a big tree, so I'm not gonna draw it out. But our goal here is remember to get to the target value. So, right, so suppose, you know, we skipped a few integers ahead and down this path, we chose a one integer, which is actually the last integer in the input you can see up above, right? Uh, in that case, if we did that, we'd have a sum of five. So this is good. We found one of the ways that we could get the target value, right? So just finding a single one, right? Remember, we're trying to find all four uh, of the of the subsets, but so far we only found a single subset. How hard was it to find a single subset? Well, the height of this tree could be n, because again, we're going to have to iterate through the entire list of nums. Uh, and the number of decisions we have is two, so you can see how I'm getting the two to the power of n from. But remember, the time complexity of this solution is actually k times two to the power of n. So what more do we need to do here? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We need to now get the next three subsets. We found one of them, and now we need to do the next ones, right? So now we're at a point where k is no longer equal to four, it's actually equal to three. But it's not only that simple, because remember, we uh, to build a single one of the subsets, we had to use a couple integers, right? Which integers did we have to use? We first used the four value that you can see up above, and we also used a one value. So pretty much we're gonna have to say, okay, the next three subsets that we create, we're not allowed to use these two integers that we already used before. So we have to keep track of that. And it's not gonna be too difficult. We can just use an array to keep track of which ones we're no longer allowed to use anymore. Uh, but, but that's the main logic of this problem, right? So just to give you an idea, this tree is not complete yet. Now, uh, you know, we found one of the subsets. Next, we're gonna create another decision tree uh, to find the second subset, and then we'd do the same to find the third and fourth subsets as well. And we might not only go down this path, it could have been from here, uh, this is a three value, but if we chose a two, then we would have had a sum of five, and then we can go down this path as well to find the following subsets. So it's definitely not uh, simple to arrive at this solution. It's one of the harder backtracking problems, but I hope it's starting to make sense to you, and I hope you understand why the time complexity is what it is. Because one of these trees is two to the power of n, and we're gonna have four of these trees stacked on top of each other, or not just four, it could be a generic value like k, so k times this is gonna be the overall time complexity. 
So after all that's said and done, we can finally jump into the code now. So now let's finally code it up. And remember, we are gonna have a target value, which is what we want each of these subsets to sum up to. And that target value is just gonna be uh, the, the sum divided by k. And we're also gonna keep track of which values from the list of nums that we've already used before. Initially, we can just populate this list of all falses, and it's gonna be the same length as the length of the input array nums. So we can do it just like that. And after we use one of these, we're gonna end up setting it to true. So now to actually implement the backtracking. Uh, and if you've seen any of my videos before, you probably know I like to nest my functions inside of the root function so we don't have to pass in these two parameters or even these parameters. But we are gonna keep track of three values. One is what index are we at in nums currently? Second, how many K partitions are left that we need to build? Initially, it could be four, it could be five, it could be whatever, but we wanna know how many partitions do we still have left to build. Of the current subset that we're building, we want to know what is the sum of that subset currently, and is it getting close to the target sub, uh, subset value that we want it to get close to? So this is the backtracking. Now, what's going to be the ultimate base case? Well, if k was equal to zero, right, meaning we don't have to do any subsets anymore, we've already built the subsets we wanna do, uh, and we were successful in doing that, so if k is, n is equal to zero, we can just return true, meaning it is possible. We achieved it and we can return true. If k is not equal to zero, then we still have to do our backtracking. But there's actually one other base case. What happens when the subset sum ends up becoming the target value? Then what do we do? Well, it doesn't mean we can immediately stop just yet because we still might have more subsets to build. But what that means is uh, if the subset sum is equal to the target value, that means we're done building this subset that we're currently at. So now what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna call backtracking again recursively, and for i, the value we're gonna pass for index i is gonna be the beginning of the nums array, because now we're building a new subset, so we're allowed to start back at the beginning of the nums array. We might not be able to use the first value. That'll depend on which values we used previously. We can figure that out from this array. For the index i, we can pass in zero. For the k value, we're gonna pass k minus one because we already built one of the subsets, so now we need to build k minus one additional subsets. For the subset sum, since we're now gonna be building a new subset, subset, we can pass in zero uh, because currently it's an empty subset, right? So this is what we're gonna end up returning. Now you can see that if k was equal to one in this case and we're passing in k minus one, then recursively this function is gonna uh, execute the first base case, which is gonna return true. So you can see that this is kind of gonna work out, but now we actually need to implement the main logic of this function, the recursive calls. So I'm gonna use a second pointer j to iterate through all of the values in the array starting at index i, because that's where we're starting at, going up until the end of the nums array. Now, for each of these values, what are we saying? For each value in nums, we can either choose it or we can not choose it, but we can only choose the value if it's available. So if not used at index j, if this value is not used, and uh, if we you know, take our current subset sum and add to it the value that we're about to use, which is at index j, nums at index j, we don't want this to exceed the target value. So if it's greater than the target value, uh, then we're gonna continue to the next iteration of the loop. Basically, we're gonna skip this value because we know it's not gonna lead us down a valid path. So if the value's already been used, and actually we can get rid of this not, so if the value has already been used or it exceeds the target, then we can continue. If not though, then we're actually gonna get into our recursive case. We're gonna end up using this value, so we're gonna set used equal to true. Then we're gonna do our recursive call backtrack. Let me just write out the function call. And then after we've done the backtracking, we're gonna clean up, basically reverse our decision, which you commonly do in backtracking problems. Say, okay, we use this value. Now after the call, we're no longer gonna be using it. So we're gonna set this back equal to false. Now, 
uh, what are we going to pass in for backtracking if we use this value? We're currently at index j, so we're going to pass in to this j plus 1. So when we call recursively the backtracking, it's going to start at j plus 1. That's what we want it to do. For k, k is going to stay the same. We're only going to be decrementing k if we've successfully completed a subset sum. And lastly, the actual subset sum itself, uh, we can set to subset sum plus nums of j. And what do we actually care about this function call? Well, we only care about it if it returns true, because if this returns true, that must mean we found a valid way to do this, so then we can immediately return true. We don't have to do anything else. So let's uh, write that. But yeah, so that's the main recursive portion of this function. You know, maybe it's easier than you thought, maybe it's even more uh, difficult than you thought, but if we don't end up returning true in this case, and our entire loop executes, we go through every possible decision, then we just want to return false because that means we did not find a successful way. And remember, don't forget to actually call your function. So let's call backtrack. For the initial index, we're of course gonna pass zero. For k, we're gonna pass in the input parameter k, and for the initial subset sum, we're also gonna pass in zero. So let's return the solution. And believe it or not, that's the entire code. Now let's run it to make sure that it actually works. That's very important. Okay, so I actually had a small typo over here. We don't want the condition and, we actually want or, because if either of these is true, then we don't want to uh, execute the backtracking. You can see how hard these problems are. A small mistake like that will cost you. So now let's actually try running it again. And as you can see on the left, yes, the solution works and it's pretty efficient. And actually, if you wanna make it even more efficient, there's a couple lines you can actually paste in. Let me just quickly do that to save time. So uh, like we talked about at the beginning, if the sum of nums isn't divisible by K, meaning that there's a remainder, if we try to divide it by K, uh, that's what you can do with the mod operator. Then we wanna immediately return false. That'll save us a little bit of time. And also we want, if we uh, sort the input array nums in reverse order, so biggest to smallest, that will also save us a little bit of time because that'll, that will make our base case execute a little bit faster. Or not our base case, but this case here that you can see if the a vowel, if the sum becomes greater than our target. So we won't end up executing unnecessary backtracking calls. So a couple things you can do. Let me just see how much faster it runs by doing that. So you can see actually it made it run quite a lot faster, 36 milliseconds, faster than 95 or 94%. So I really hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.